it's on this very special day at this very special house. A very special little baby is going to come live with us. And who do we see but the mommy? All of these movies is just, they could be yours. They could be mine. It could be anybody you know. Look at these special kids. They've waited so long for this baby. You are watching the birth of a family. After six years of marriage, Mark and Donna Winger are about to adopt a baby girl. How do you feel, Donna? I'm overwhelmed. And I just want her to know that it just so happens that the day she's coming home to us is the anniversary of our engagement of Mark and I. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Mark and Donna were sort of put on this pedestal as this beautiful young couple who had struggled to have kids, and now they finally were able to adopt this three-month-old baby. Here comes our special delivery. Oh, look. Oh, sweet. You look at this beautiful mother with her beautiful child and are just starting out the relationship. Donna doesn't have a clue this is going to be one of the last times that she's able to have a moment like this with Bailey. On August 29th, 1995, the Springfield Police Department responded to a 911 call. Is the man still in your house? Yes, he's laying there on the floor with a bullet in his head. There had been a shooting at Westview Drive in Springfield. It happened in a nice neighborhood right when people were coming home from work by a ballpark where kids play baseball. When they arrived, they found a very grisly scene. I could see the victims from the front door. Donna was uh, clinging to life. She had been hit no less than seven times in the head with a hammer. The second victim was an unknown white male lying on the floor. He still had signs of life and a pulse uh, with two gunshot wounds to the head. It was quite chaotic. They were working on them, putting tubes in them. I knew that they were going to be transporting the victims soon. So I wanted to try and get identification on the male subject. So I went and took his wallet out of his back pocket. And in his wallet, he had a driver's license, which identified him as Roger Arrington. Then I proceeded to assess the crime scene itself to try and gather as much information as I could. We have a hammer covered with what appears to be blood. The husband reported that his wife was being beaten by a guy with a hammer. We have a 45 caliber semi-automatic handgun. On the dining room table was the weapon that was used to shoot Mr. Harrington. Also on that table was a yellow mug and a pack of cigarettes. Roger Harrington's car was parked going against traffic, facing the wrong direction. It was very out of place for that neighborhood. Inside of the vehicle, the police found a note. Written on there was the time of 4.30 p.m., the address, and the name Mark Wenger. I proceeded back to the master bedroom to talk with the husband, Mark Wenger. He was rocking back and forth on the end of the bed. He was very upset, very emotional. He kept asking, who's that? man that was in my house and even though i knew who it was i did not want to let him know at that point we got him calmed down then we started getting into what had occurred he was working out downstairs on his treadmill when he had heard a thump upstairs at that point he shut the treadmill off and started walking up the steps to make sure everything was okay when he got to the master bedroom he seen his three-month-old child laying on the bed, which he said Donna would have never done, which concerned him. He then said he heard noises, which made him believe that Donna was in distress. So at that point, he got his semi-automatic weapon out of the nightstand. And as he walked down the hallway, he observed a man beating her with a hammer. The male subject looked up at him 
and then lowered his head again to take another swing at his wife, and that's when he shot him. Mark had stated the man fell backwards, landing on his back, and that he began to sit up, and that Mark immediately shot him a second time. Does he have a gun? The planes are everywhere. Is he dead? I don't know. He's making weird sounds. Please. Okay, who is this man? I don't, I don't know who he is. He asked us many times who this gentleman was. At one point, he said, is that guy's name Roger? And at that point, I felt that I needed to answer his question. I told him, yes, his name was Roger Harrington. And Mark was shocked, and he said, oh, my God, that's the man who's been harassing my wife this week. Four or five days before this incident, his wife had went down to visit her parents in Florida. Donna told me that Mark had a conference. Um, I said to her, why don't you come to Florida? It would be so wonderful. Looks like Grandma and Popeye have found the baby. Donna was excited to show off her baby. And uh, as all of her trips, it was always very sad to see her go. Say hi, Daddy. Say, we miss you. I dropped her off at the airport, and she left. We had hired a driver to pick her up in St. Louis and drive her right to her house. This way, she could just take care of the baby. It was about a two-hour drive, and there was a lot of time to talk. And so this gentleman started opening up to Donna about issues he was having. He had a voice in his head named Dom. Dom would tell him to do bad things. Recently, Dom was telling him to hurt people. And then he started flirting with her, saying that he liked older women and he liked to have sex parties. And he invited Donna to join him. And this ride, as she describes it, is really scary. He's driving erratically, 75 miles an hour. He's raving about demons that talk to him. It's terrifying. She calls me, she tells me this whole story. And I said to her, like any, you know, supportive sister would, you had a really crazy driver, but you're home, you're safe, you're gonna be okay. She said, I really, I am really scared. After the harrowing ride, Donna had been the victim of some strange phone calls. They had believed that the driver had been stalking her and was a danger. So Mark started calling the limousine company and filing a complaint. Roger got suspended from his job because of the complaint. And Mark suggested that Donna write down the story and it would be good information to be very specific, just in case they need it. At the murder scene, one of the police officers goes over to the refrigerator, and he notices this note written in Donna's handwriting. We entered the van, and he introduced himself to me as Roger. He talked to me about his spirit, Dom. He told me things like, Dom makes him do things, like set car bombs and killing people. I felt as if my life and the life of my daughter were in the hands of a nut. For Detective Cox, this note on the refrigerator fits in neatly with what Mark Winger is saying. It got us up to speed on why they were worried about this guy and why this guy come to his house. Detective Cox viewed Roger Harrington with great skepticism. He had a history with Roger Harrington. I knew him as a very volatile type subject. I owned a trailer park in town, and him and his wife rented a trailer from me. Roger and his wife had had domestic disputes that I had to get involved in. Knowing what I knew about Mr. Harrington in the past, how quick he was to anger, I thought that he very well could have went over there to try to get his job back, and he snapped. There's a hammer laying right there on the table. He picks it up, goes into a rage, then the husband shoots the bad guy. Donna died a violent death. She was struck from behind one time from the left, and then she was struck at least six more times on the base of her skull, where she was brutally beaten to death with a hammer. I told Mark that he had done everything he could to try and save his wife, but we still needed to tell him that his wife 
had passed away. He had called his rabbi to come to the house to help him through this. He was a wreck, you know, and I was trying to comfort him and not knowing quite what to say because I didn't know what there was to say. When the police examined the scene and when they listened to Mark's explanation of what happened, the detectives came to the conclusion that Mark Winger acted in self-defense and the case was closed within approximately 48 hours. It all fit pretty good. In fact, almost too good. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.